Welcome to the first episode of Objective and Opinion. Since this is the first episode, I'll give a brief explanation of what I intend to do here. The show is divided into two parts. Objective, where I explain what the game is and what it sets out to do, with as little personal input as possible, and Opinion, where I give my own thoughts about the game and who I would recommend it to. So, let's get right into it. One hundred percent orange juice is a one to four player board game featuring dice and card mechanics. The winner is the first player to either collect a certain amount of stars or defeat a set amount of enemies. You go about this by traversing the board, fighting other players and computer enemies, and using your cards to either help you, hinder others, or even potentially hurt yourself and help others. The game is made by the Japanese devs Orange Juice. It features characters from all their games and a few that are unique to this one. Don't worry, you might miss a few in-jokes, but no background knowledge is required in the slightest to enjoy this game. Since the game is deceivingly complicated at first glance, I think the easiest way to explain gameplay would be to go in order of how it plays. Now, this might be kind of an info dump at first, but you need to know the basics before we get to the cool stuff. If I mention something I haven't fully explained yet, I'll get to it soon. It'll all come together at the end, I swear. Also, keep in mind this video was written around the middle of May 2017, so some of the stuff I say regarding DLC may become out of date at some point. Also, if you're worrying about performance, the game runs at a solid 60fps. Any of the slowdown and weird stuff in the video is just due to my editing. To start, you need to pick a character. Each character has their own specific stats, HP, attack, defense, and evade. But I'll go into more how those work when talking about battling. Each character also has a unique hyper ability, which we'll get to later as well. Next up is building your deck. Here is where you will pick up to 10 cards that you will be able to use during the game. The catch is, all the cards that everyone picks are loaded into one main deck that every player draws from. Meaning that any card you choose here, everyone could have a chance to use. This means that you have to think carefully as any card you pick could also be played against you. Hyper cards are unique though. In the deck there are 8 blank hyper cards. As soon as a player draws one of these, the card turns into whatever their respective character's hyper ability is. So, while players can potentially draw any other card you placed in the deck, only you can ever use your character's specific hyper card. You can also save some deck combinations, so you don't have to manually pick every card each match. We'll get onto what these cards can do later. Now, onto the actual gameplay. Bear with me, since so many things are at play at once, I'll try to explain in an order that hopefully makes sense. Everyone starts off on their own home panel, and with one card from the deck. Player order is randomly signed and player 1 starts off the game. You have two options you can do at the start of every turn. You can either roll the die and move, or play a card and then move. Also, at the beginning of every chapter, or set of turns, players receive a small amount of stars. Depending on the type of panel you land on, or if there is another player on that panel, there are multiple possibilities that could happen. There are six kinds of panels. Neutral panels, where nothing happens. Bonus panels, where you roll a die and get an amount of stars based on the number rolled in your current level. Drop panels, like a bonus panel but you lose that amount of stars. Draw panels, where you get to draw a card from the deck. Warp panels, where you get teleported to another warp panel. Encounter panels, where you battle a computer enemy. And finally, check panels, which will heal 1 HP and your Norma will be checked. I'll get to what a Norma is later. If you happen to land on a panel with another player on it, you have the choice to battle them. You are under no obligation to fight if you don't want to, and there are no penalties if you do not. If you do decide to fight, this is when your character's stats come into play. Combat consists of two rounds, an attack round and a defend round. If you initiated the attack, you start in attack mode, while the other defends, and the next round is vice versa. First, the attacker rolls their die. If the character's attack stat is something other than zero, you modify the rolled number by whatever it is. This number could be positive or negative. The defender then has two options to pick from. They can either defend or evade. If they choose to defend, as long as they roll a number that's the same or higher than the number the attacker rolled, they will only take one damage. If they roll lower than the attacker's number, then they take the difference between the two as damage. If the defender decides to evade and they roll a number higher than the attacker, they negate the attack and don't take any damage at all. If they roll the same or lower number though, then they take the full amount of the attacker's roll as damage. Just like how the attacker's roll was modified by their attack stat, some characters' defense and evade stats are different too, so those would have to be taken into account as well. 
If neither character loses all their HP, then gameplay returns to the board and continues as normal. If one character loses all their HP, they are knocked out and whoever won steals a portion of the defeated player's stars. The winner also gains a win. When the knocked out player's turn happens during the board portion of the game, they need to roll their recovery number or higher to revive and continue playing. This number decreases by one each turn. If they manage to fail the roll after the recovery number reaches two, they will be automatically revived the next turn. The other situation a battle could happen is if you land on an encounter panel. This will summon a random NPC enemy for you to fight. After the fight, regardless if the enemy was knocked out or not, they disappear. However, sometimes the encounter panels change to a boss panel. Instead of a random enemy, anyone who lands on the boss panel will fight the boss character assigned to the board. Unlike the regular enemies, this one doesn't disappear until it dies. Anyone defeated by this enemy will have a portion of their stars absorbed by the boss. Whoever ends up defeating the boss will then gain all those stars. So if you're able to pick when you fight the boss, you can get rewarded with a ton of stars if others have failed before you. Alright, now to actually explain how to go about winning. To win a game, you have to reach level 5 and complete your last Norma. You start at level 1 and you gain a level each time you complete a Norma. A Norma is basically your current objective. There are two kinds of Norma. The first is having a certain amount of stars in your possession, and the other is having won enough battles against enemies or players. The first Norma for everyone is to collect at least 10 stars. To actually turn in and complete a Norma, you have to land on a check panel, or a home panel. Your home panel is where you start, and you heal 1 HP if you land on anybody's home panel. It's easier to land on your own home panel than someone else's because it gives you the option of stopping at your own panel no matter what number you rolled, so you can't get stuck overshooting your own panel all the time. Once you fulfill this first Norma, you level up and you can pick whether you want stars or wins to be your next Norma. Once you pick one though, you can't change it until you complete it. The thing is that while you can lose stars, you can't lose wins. So while it's harder to get the required amount of wins at higher levels, you can't lose them. So they're safer, but more difficult to gain. Once you get to level 5 and complete your final Norma, you win the game. But... Alright, now onto the fun part finally. Let's summarize the basic gameplay up to this point just to make sure you're up to speed. Players take turns rolling dice to traverse around the board, gathering up stars and battling for wins, completing their Norma, and trying to get to level 5 and finish their Norma first to win the game. That's the gist of it. Except there's been some things I've been waiting to get to. Cards, characters, and field events. This is where things get interesting. Almost everything I've said about the game up to this point can be shaken up because of these. Let's start with cards. So the deck you built before the game started gets mixed in with everybody else's cards and then placed into a shared deck that everyone draws from. There's the blank hyper cards in there too. I went over that much, but not what the cards are capable of. Most characters are capable of holding three cards with at least one exception that can hold four. Some cards cost a certain amount of stars to use while others are free. Some cards can even only be used once you reach a certain level. All this info is shown on the sides of the cards. There's a few types of cards as well. There's boost cards, which can affect you or someone else and are used before you move. Battle cards, which are used before a battle starts. Trap cards, which you place on the ground where someone, including yourself, could land on them. And event cards that can have any number of effects without you specifying a target. You don't really need to remember the types, since they all explain what they do on the cards themselves anyways. There's all kinds of cards that change up almost every aspect of gameplay. I think the best way to show what these can do is just to list off what some of them do. There are cards that change battle stats for better or worse for both players. There are cards that take away HP or heal HP. There are cards that make you lose or switch out your cards, maybe back to the deck or with another person. Ones that change how many dice you roll cards that you can place on the ground, and if you land on them again, you get a bunch of stars. There's way too many to go over them all, but it's safe to say that there are cards that affect almost every single aspect of gameplay. This is where the majority of the game's chaos and strategy comes from. Choosing which cards to play and when can totally change the tide of a match. Next up is characters. For being a board game, there are a ton of characters to choose from, and none of them play exactly the same. There are four characters unlocked from the start, with eight more you can unlock by playing through the story mode and buying them in the shop with in-game currency. Six playable enemy characters can also be unlocked, but some differ slightly from their computer-controlled counterparts. There are also a whopping 14 DLC characters, and an additional four characters on top of that that can only be played if you own the respective games they come from. 
So without DLC, that's 18 possible characters, but with DLC and owning the other games, a humongous 38 total characters. I'll touch on the concept of DLC in this game towards the end of the objective section. So each of these characters has their own stats and unique hyper ability. Except for some of the enemy characters you can unlock, they're kinda weird and some of them might not have a hyper ability, but they usually have something like really high stats to balance it out. You probably won't actually be using them that much anyways. Like the cards, since there are so many of them, I'll just mention a few. QP, one of the starting characters, has a hyper card that can be played before a battle that adds plus two attack and if you get knocked out during the battle, you won't lose any stars and you will revive automatically on the next turn. Basically, a nice free pass for a battle if it doesn't look like it's going your way. Suguri, another possible starting character, has a hyper card that lets them roll two dice for every roll during that chapter. So for movement, battle, bonus, and drop panels, you get to roll two dice instead of one. Sora, an unlockable character, also has a dice-based one, which automatically rolls a six for everything for a chapter. There are plenty of other hypers that do more interesting things, such as skipping everyone else's turns, damaging everyone, or even swapping a character's own stats around. The star cost of everyone's hypers also varies quite a bit, anywhere from a few stars to whatever your current level is multiplied by 10. Because of this, sometimes it's cheaper to play a hyper card earlier on. But just like the regular cards, sometimes hypers have a level requirement as well. And finally, the last part of the gameplay, field events. It's not just other players that are trying to screw you over all the time, sometimes it's the board itself. Except for one board, every board by default has field events, which are things that affect gameplay for everybody. They generally happen every so many chapters and range from healing everyone for 1 HP, to even getting a free card, or even changing up where the home panels are. They're not always positive or neutral though. Sometimes everyone takes one damage, or it converts all the bonus and drop panels into encounter panels instead. There's even one called Mystery, which will play a different field event every five chapters. When you're playing a free play match though, you can turn these on and off at your own whim, with up to three being allowed per match. All right, <laughs> that's finally the end of the gameplay section. Let's go on to what the different modes, customization, and DLC are on offer. There are two main modes of play, one being the story mode and the other being free play. Story mode is where you play through a predefined set of boards with specific characters and a fairly light story. You need to play through this to unlock the other base characters in the game. There are multiple difficulties to choose from as well. The other is free play, which you can play by yourself against three AI opponents or with up to three online players. No matter what, there are always four players though. Anyone who is not being played by a real person will be filled by AI. In free play, you can pick any board with any set of field events you want. When you play online, while in the lobby, you can see everyone's customized avatar, level, and number of online match wins. Also regarding online, in multiplayer every turn has a 60 second limit, and if a player doesn't do something by then, the AI moves for them, and if someone fails to act 3 times, they get kicked out and fully replaced by AI. As you play through the game, you gain stars, which are the in-game currency for buying new things, such as characters or palette swaps and accessories to customize how your characters look. You can also buy new boards to use in free play. If you put the stars into it, you can unlock up to a 30% discount for everything in the shop as well. This is also where you buy card packs. In a style mimicking collectible card games, you buy booster packs, which then add cards to your collection. They are fairly cheap, and you should be able to get plenty of cards after playing a few games. Stars also function as a form of experience points, with certain items in the shop being unlocked at higher levels, or getting cosmetic items when you level up. In a recent update, which overhauled quite a bit of the shop interface, they added limited time challenges similar to dailies in other games that function on their own currency of oranges. There are some things that you can only buy with this currency. There are also time-specific events, such as Halloween and Christmas, where you earn a special currency during those periods to get event-specific items. You might have noticed that at times the gameplay looks really fast, with the characters bouncing up and down at a pace that would quickly liquefy their brains. There is a speed option for the game between 1 and 4 where you can speed up play. All of this footage has been from the highest speed, 4. Once you understand the basics of the game, playing at max speed is easy and substantially speeds up play as it quickens all the animations. During story mode, you can also hold down the control button to speed it up to max speed if you only want to speed it up at certain times while keeping the default speed lower. Now to finally talk about the DLC. So as I mentioned before, there are 14 DLC characters as well as 4 characters that are locked behind owning entirely different games. There are also 2 card booster packs that add new cards to the game as well as one cosmetic pack. 
The character DLC packs are split into groups of two for a total of eight character DLC packs. One of these character DLC packs also includes two new story campaigns starring each of the characters in the pack. The four characters that are locked behind owning entirely separate games are variants on characters that already exist in the game. They do have their own stats and hypers though. The card booster packs function in the same way as they do in the base game. Buying the booster DLCs doesn't give you all the cards in the pack immediately, it just unlocks them for purchase. You need to use the in-game currency to actually buy the card packs. There is a very important thing to note regarding DLC and playing online though. Since the deck is shared between players, everyone will always have access to the DLC cards if someone picked them, creating a level playing field. However, more important is if you join a match in progress. If you join an online match that is already in progress, you cannot pick your own character. You will just randomly fill in one of the AI slots. This means that if you are joining the game in progress, it is possible that you can play as one of the DLC characters. This is good because it means you aren't limited to what lobbies you can join. However, once the match ends, if you stay in the lobby, you will only be able to pick from the characters you personally have unlocked, obviously. And finally, that draws the objective section to a close. Alright, I gotta be honest. I love this game. I don't think I can think of a single genuine complaint besides the few extra characters that are locked behind other games, and even then, that doesn't bug me too much as the characters aren't really that important. They're more of a bonus for owners of the other games rather than incentives for people to buy them. The gameplay impact they have is negligible at best. The visual presentation is really clean and smooth. Gameplay is quick, with the speed set to max, there's almost no downtime at all except for if someone is thinking of what to do. The soundtrack, while I think some of it is royalty free, not that that matters, has some pretty great tracks too, as every character has their own theme that plays from when they complete Enorma to whenever another player does, so if you're constantly ahead of the pack, the music will reflect that. The story, while not the best story of all time obviously, is at the very least a cool extra thing to play and have some progression. It's not that often you see a virtual board game with a story mode, unless it is and I didn't know, in which case, please tell me. Sure, some might be put off by the RNG aspect of the dice rolls, and it can be frustrating to fail the revive four times in a row, or get constantly taken out by an enemy player, but I personally think that's part of the charm. It's a board game that would be a huge pain to play if it was an actual board game. I know. I've tried. Someone made a version of it for Tabletop Simulator. It would probably take forever to actually finish, even if you had all the calculators for the stars and... The character customization options you get, while fairly basic, are a great little addition to make your characters feel unique. I also really love some of the weird titles and quotes on some of the cards. I haven't played all the games that these characters are from, so not knowing the context to some of these cards seems to make them even better. Like this card. Nice jingle. We've got a bunch. Okay. Or this one. Out of ammo. Ran out of ammo! Really? Holy night. Aha, that's why it's a party night. What? My favorite though is probably the nice present card. You're gonna help me deliver the presents. No exclamation mark or anything. I just read that as being a really passive aggressive threat. You're gonna help me deliver the presents. As for who I would recommend this to, probably people who like board games that, while not insanely complicated, still have some elements of strategy. Also, people who don't get immensely frustrated with RNG mechanics. The online play is flawless and I've never seen a time where there isn't at least a couple matches going on. So even if you don't have anyone else to play with that you know, there should be plenty there if you want to play against actual people. While I personally like it, I will admit that the anime style aesthetic might throw some people off, but if you can look past that, you're in for a great board game. The game sells for $7 USD on Steam, but goes on sale really often. Seriously, just look at is there any deal. It's crazy how often this game is on sale. Heck, it's on sale for $1.74 on Humble as I'm writing this script right now. You can also get a 4-pack on Steam for only $15 USD. Since I know pricing can be a touchy subject, I probably won't talk about it too much on more expensive games unless I feel really strongly about it. I think at this price, for how much fun I've had with this game, I'd definitely say it's worth it. If you actually made it this far, thank you. Sorry that the video drags on for so long, but I wanted to make sure I covered every aspect of the gameplay that I could. If I managed to keep your attention for this long, I guess I did something right. Since this was the first episode, if you have any feedback or recommendations, please let me know. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again soon.